As a greatly diminished Miles is forced to challenge an enraged Hobgoblin, will he be able to dig deep and find the power necessary to overcome this new threat? Well, let's hop into the pages of Miles Morales Spider-Man. Issue number nine and find out together, shall we? Alrighty then, so picking up directly from where the last issue had left off, Spider-Man and his girlfriend Starling had gone to try and stop a Beyond robbery, being perpetrated by Roderick Kingsley, the Hobgoblin, only there's a couple big problems. First off, Miles' spider sense has been on the fritz since his last run in with Carnage, meaning that Gobby can actually sneak up on him where before he wouldn't be able to. Secondly, Spider-Man and Starling are also currently trapped inside a Beyond building after the security system dropped the fire shutters behind them. As Miles fights for his life, Tiana actually ends up making a very unlikely new friend in the form of Gare, a friendly little robot programmed to tell jokes and guide people around the Beyond building on tours. It's after talking to the robot long enough, Tiana finally manages to piece together what exactly it is Kingsley was after. Of course, you'll already know if you read the previous issue what Kingsley was after was one of those oh-so-classic Spider-Man machines that allows you to delete and doctor memories. Starling's reaction to this revelation is pretty funny too. She just very calmly goes, huh, guess they're evil then, before eventually getting to work trying to open the shutters. Now back over with Miles, he tries to dig deep by activating his brand new bioelectrical ability that lets him shape the electricity he creates. You'll remember that he had used this power during the last few seconds of his battle with the rabble, but hadn't used it since, and the reason for that is, well, it's such a new power, Miles isn't even 100% sure how to use it yet. As Hobgoblin notes, new Spider-Man is a lot more fun and interesting than old Spider-Man, and oh buddy, ain't that the truth. Kingsley's also not stupid, this isn't his first super fight, and because of that, he manages to realize, even before Miles, that using this new weapon-shaping ability actually drains him more than just the regular old Venom Blasts. It's perhaps a good thing, then, that it's not the only weapon in Miles' arsenal. Misty Knight has been teaching him martial arts, and he actually manages to judo flip the goblin, which I quite enjoyed seeing. It's after that, Starly makes the scene, and the two super kids are finally able to take the fight directly to the goblin, getting the upper hand on him. Kingsley might be good, but two-on-one is still two-on-one. Of course, stopping him is just part one of a much bigger plan, because the kids also need to make sure that he doesn't abscond with that memory-changing device. Miles and Tiani even manage to work out a cool, fast ball special style move wherein Starling flies up in the air and swings Miles around using the full force of the momentum to take the Hobgoblin out. Now by all right, this is usually where a fight like this would come to an end, but Hobgoblin is playing for keeps today. He's leaving with that machine even if it kills him, and because of that he activates two of his pumpkin bombs in a last ditch suicide Hail Mary play, meaning that our two heroes have to actually get back as not to be trapped in the same explosion. The day is saved, but the story is still far from over. You'll remember in the previous issue, Miles was talking about all the trauma and stress he's been under following his run-in with Carnage, torture at the hands of the Assessor, as well as fighting murderous doppelgangers all in a very short amount of time, and well, it seems like the walls of the dam are finally about to break, as Miles ends up having himself a very understandable little meltdown, one that Tiana felt was probably a long time coming, given everything he's been through. This scene, more than anything, I think proving that old adage that when you see people cry, it's not because they're they're weak, it's only because they've been strong for way too long. Deanna swears that she'll do everything in her power, along with Misty and all of Miles' other friends, to make sure that he gets some help and gets someone to talk to. And I mean, hey, this is the Marvel Universe, it's a pretty big place. I'm sure a therapist that deals in superheroes won't be hard to find. Hey, what's Doc Samson up to these days? I mean, he hasn't done a lot of great work with the Hulk, but let's call him anyway, might be fun. Oh, but we're not done yet, because before the comic can reach its final close, we're sure to check back on in with Hobgob. Kingsley survived the explosion because, well, no duh, I can't stress this enough, no body, no death. But we finally do learn why he wanted the memory editing device. I assumed that he was stealing it for the Goblin Queen, who he was in league with at the end of that last Spider-Man story a couple arcs ago. But to my surprise, the opposite is actually true. Hobgoblin stole the memory editing device so that he could free his own mind from the Queen Goblin's control. Where will that story go? I don't know, but I know that's where this comic comes to an end. And so, that was Miles Morales Spider-Man issue number 9, everybody, and overall I thought it was okay, not the best arc we've had so far. But when it was good, it was very good, and it's certainly a lot better than the main Amazing Spider-Man book has been in a long time, a lot more interesting and a lot more character focused too, for what it's worth. I think my biggest complaint is that this two-pack of stories here was a lot more front-ended with a lot more compelling stuff in the first part, and this second issue was mainly a lot more action, and which is fine, but there's only so many times you can see Spider-Man, any Spider-Man for that 
that matter, fight it out with the Hobgoblin before things get a little bit repetitive. Yes, we do learn a bit more about Miles' new power, and the implication is, is that Miles himself will actually be looking into getting some professional help for all the troubles and traumas that come with being a superhero, which should probably lead to some pretty good stories down the line. It's just so much of it felt disconnected from the Hobgoblin stuff, try though they might to make it all connect, either literally or thematically. Again, perfectly enjoyable enough, but not quite at the heights of that first Rabble arc. I also hope moving forward the series can really knuckle down and make the most of its time before we head into Gang War, yet another big Spider-Man crossover event that's going to be hijacking a bunch of these books moving forward. In summation, though, I would give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye bye